people sink very quickly. But then, does everybody float up at no. some point? Some people stay at the bottom and never come back again. If they sink, uh, there, there are fish. The, the lungs will be full of water. Do you think more people are not found because they sink? I think so. I think so. With the quantities of bodies that are never recovered. So. Because these people, they cross all the desert, yeah. the Sahara. Because if they are from uh, Nigeria, Ghana, Somalia, they have to cross all the desert. They have to go to Libya, and Libya is the beginning of Africa. Yeah. So they leave from Libya. As if they come to Europe, they can go to Italy, France, Germany, England, Holland. Because nowadays it's without passport. You yeah. pay the yeah. money to the train and it takes you to Amsterdam, to Dam Square. <laughs> because they want to go really, not to Malta, mm -hmm. to Italia. The closer country they are, you have to invite them. Yeah. Because these are, they are risking their life. But the people who bring them, they don't want to take them to Italia. They, they tell them that because they pay more than 1,000 euro every person. But the people who bring them, they are uh, contraband people. Mm -hmm. They take a lot of money from them. And as soon as they are near Malta, they throw them away into the sea. And 60% of them, they couldn't swim because they live in Sahara, they have no water. And they say that you are in Italia, and they are not in Italia. They are in Malta, but the people who bring them, they run away quickly. Nobody knows exactly how many people lose their lives trying to cross the Mediterranean Sea in unregulated boats from Africa. Many migrants who die sink to the bottom of the sea they are never found. The known numbers of the deceased are derived from press reports and estimations. It is fair to assume that at least 14,000 migrants died crossing the sea between 1993 and mid-2012. Thomas Spikerborough is Professor of Migration Law at VU University, Amsterdam. He wants to know whether there has been an increase in migrant deaths over the last 25 years. This is me, Tamara Last. I want to individualize the anonymous deceased by tracing every single person whose drowning was registered along the coast from Greece to Portugal. My goal is to make the database of the drowned as accurate and comprehensive as possible. In March 2014, Thomas and I visited Malta for a first inventory of the available registers and other relevant sources of information. Earlier similar pilots were conducted to Lesbos and Evros in Greece and Sicily in Italy.
<laughs> of pride. Like if I'm a migration researcher, the least I can do is to notice that all these people are dying. And that's what it is about. Yeah. That we notice. Yeah, for me, that's the, at least, let's at least, if, even if we don't know anything better, at least let's notice. Would yeah. you agree? Yeah, but not as a researcher. <laughs> as what? Uh, a European. I. That was the most striking thing about Lesbos for me. Was that when the Afghan guy turned around and said, "They're your borders. It's you they're defending." They're dying for you. That was completely. I had never thought about it like that. You're a member of the society that these borders are supposedly protecting. So, you know. Yeah. Uh, published a book I think ten years ago. Um, with the names of all Dutch Jews who died in the Holocaust, um, and it's, it's uh, I think it's it's alphabetic, uh, and it's just that name, date of birth, uh, as far as known, date and location of death. Uh, that's shocking in itself, and even more shocking is the preface, where the publishers uh, apologize for the fact that they may be making mistakes. There might be people who died in fact on other days. There might be people who are not included here who should be. Please warn us because then we can improve for the next edition. Uh, it's, it's that kind of clinic. Partly it's the clinical precision that is so uh, really shocking. And maybe that's, that's, that's what I would like to reach with this project. Next step? Go, cemetery. Go to the cemetery. We are trying to make a count of how many people have died crossing over. But, but the problem is with Malta is that we went to the registry office and we were looking, but they don't register all of the deaths because they don't register the ones that died outside of Maltese waters. They, re they don't put the death, they don't make a death certificate. Only a burial permit. When did you start? Around 2007. 2007. What kind of information is in a burial permit? Because here is the name, the place where he was born, maybe, how old he was paid. Normally we don't know. Yeah. The mm -hmm. thing is that the place where they were found, this is not a very effective place. So they, oh, they tell you where they died? Where they died, maybe. It is difficult to find the right information. The civil registry generally only registers those who drowned within 12 miles of the Maltese coast. 
The Adolorata Cemetery registers all persons buried there, not those buried at the mosque. The burial permit does not always show where and how people died. There is not one complete list, yet. David Grima is the coroner for the whole of Malta. He sees all the dead in forensic cases, including the drowned. He has established a professional database as of 2004. Uterine death. It's a it's a fetus. Oh, okay. We, yes, we had a couple of cases. I can remember a couple couple of cases with heart problems who, who died in detention centers. This and the, also it looks like if there that there has been a bad fight, fractured skull. Um, uh, I remember that as well. Yeah. Yes. Uh, but uh, those those I actually don't include in my. No, no. no. We, 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 don't include, we don't want to include don't either. either. Okay, you started the database in 2004 yes, when uh, you saw uh, it was becoming a big thing. Yes, exactly. No, I, I also started working on the issue in 2007, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, when it became... When it became big. Uh, it's, it, it is a big thing. I mean... Uh, especially the survivors. I mean, uh, a lot of uh, survivors will... Uh, I mean, uh, we, our major problem is actually the survivors, because, I mean, uh, in such big quantities, uh, you don't know their identity, you have to provide uh, food, shelter, and whatnot, I mean. They don't pay money where they live. They don't pay money for electricity. They don't pay money for water. They don't pay any tax. They don't pay any VAT. They can stay in the street. They can work because they go less money than the Maltese do. But on the other hand, they have no expenses. Actually, the Border Patrol is giving, is watching this guy. And I hope, I hope, but I hope, let's say we stop. And what makes you believe that no religion is man? Yeah. Yeah. What's the reason? I, I am not convinced by any of them. I don't find them convincing. <laughs>
a grave, in a common grave. This is the cross section of it. There is place for three coffins. Right. This is number over one, this is over two, and this yeah. is over three. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. The one is at the bottom, the yeah. in the middle, and the So this is the grave of um, um, he died in October 2005 and he was Sudanese um, and he's on the first level so he's the, the lowest of the three they are removing all the bones from the graves at the moment and uh, so his bones will be removed in one to three weeks if nobody claims the bones, so they remove the bones after nine to ten years, they put them in a building over there. buried together with Maltese, uh, people who cannot afford their burial. Um, I think that's very moving because you don't separate migrants out from, from other people and treat them like, like anybody else. Um, I found the, 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 the graveyard in the north of uh, Greece. Uh, beautiful scenery-wise, but I find it shocking. That, that, that you don't know who is where. I thought that the location and the fact that they had a cemetery to themselves made it more of a monument in a way. And I think while I completely agree that it's nice to have them treated the same when after they die, but at the same time that's almost, that's sort of too late to me. And they are different because they have died in a way that none of the other paupers in the cemetery would have died. So I think um, it, it, I think it's almost uh, it creates a false sense of, of equality to um, treat them the same as everybody else after they've died. Then what's the point? Then why not treat them the same as everybody else before they die when it actually counts? Unless you were to go like we did and talk to uh, the man who runs the cemetery, you would have no idea that there were any migrants buried here at all. I, I do like this grave. I think it's 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 uh, well kept, which the um, at least the Lesbos one was really not. Um, the Lesbos one I think was the most shocking for me. I had never seen graves treated as rubbish bins before. Um, they, the fact that they had these little walls meant that they had just been sort of, some of them had just been filled in with rubbish. There were also um, bones all over the place. Uh, they um, obviously didn't take much care when they were digging a new grave to make sure that they weren't sort of disturbing any of the other graves. Um, and that was quite uh, Horrific. And they're separate graves, so it's completely different from here. Yeah, I've been to one graveyard on Sicily. There were two old grave diggers. Um, they were very indignant about those graves. There was one grave with three children, 14, 15, 16 years old. And they, uh, they had planted uh, a chestnut or something, uh, taken root and they, they put it there. And uh, a woman uh, put fresh flowers on that grave every week. That was special in its own manner. 
their degrees were awful, but these men were so, so sweet and caring. It's great when there are people who, who try to do something with the, with the, yeah, with the, the misery of these, these people. I think we have to justify border control. To me it is not something that should be done without good reason, or simply because it is a convenient vote winning card. It must have purpose and it must not cause harm. So the question we need to answer is, are our borders killing people? If they are, we need to ask ourselves if that is something we can accept. <laughs>